The suitcase boombox is nothing new. It's something that I built almost 10 years ago, and I always thought it was a novel idea, but it was lacking some features like wireless audio and portable power. So recently I've revisited this, and let's take a look at two examples, the budget version and the not-so-budget version. Let's build a portable Bluetooth boombox. Both of these builds, and I suspect any version you attempt, has one thing in common, a hard shell type suitcase. I found these American tourister suitcases at flea markets and thrift stores. They're somewhat common in the thrifting scene, and it took a few stores to locate. So $5 seems to be a fair price, and that's what each one of these suitcases cost. Now that we have the common item for both builds, let's focus on the deep pockets build, which really means you have to buy some speakers to fit the size of the suitcase you picked. Car speakers are the best option here, and you can find just about any size and any price range for your needs. I found this pair at Best Buy in the late 2000s when I believe the car stereo fad was starting to wane. Uh, then again, I was in my early 20s, and if you follow this graph, I think that's a normal occurrence. I need it! In this case, these are 6x9 inch speakers and conveniently have the mid-range and tweeters built in. They sound pretty decent. Next is the amplifier. Knowing the consumer market helps these next two purchases, you think why not get a Bluetooth amplifier in one, but it's actually double the price if you just buy these separate components, and that's what I've done. I just have a plain amplifier and a simple Bluetooth receiver. The amplifier is a Le Pi brand, which is pretty common for around $25. It's a general purpose, uh, small home audio amplifier, and it's worked really well for me. Speaker compatibility wise, it works with impedances between 4 to 8 ohms, which is pretty common for car speakers. The Bluetooth receiver, um, in most cases, are a dime a dozen. I found this one at Walmart, which features a built in battery and is really just a modern day equivalent of the cassette adapter when you know CD players started to become a thing. Uh, and I'm happy to see the struggle is still real for uh, new car owners. So construction requires a jigsaw and a drill. Box speakers are nice if you buy them new. Uh, they come with mounting templates. So this template helped me plan out my layout on the suitcase. So I made those cutouts first. Then I found a piece of quarter inch wood to strengthen the wall of the suitcase where I mount the speakers. You'll have to remove the decorative fabric from the inside of the suitcase to get to the hard shell. Uh, doing that, I glued the wood to the back of the suitcase and I let this cure overnight with weights on top. When the glue dried, I just used a jigs jigsaw to repeat that same baffle cutout for the speaker. Wiring everything goes like this. The amplifier's left and right channels plug into each speaker with speaker wire, which is like 18 gauge. The Bluetooth module goes into the amp's audio input. And to wrap this version up, I just used a 12 volt wall adapter to power the speakers. The rear vent, which is like an IKEA furniture grommet, was the way I routed the power cable into the suitcase until I added a DC jack extension on the outside. And much, much later, I made this version portable, which is what you're looking at now, by powering it with a cordless drill battery and then the Bluetooth amp, which you know was a recent addition. So we'll talk about the portable power aspect later in the version that I just recently built, and that's the shoestring budget version. Here's the other version, built on a budget of under $30, and this can be even less depending on the Bluetooth receiver that you spec. Um, but everywhere else, I've cut corners, and you can find most of these parts as discarded junk. So I don't recommend going to the extreme budget route like I've done here, although, these, although this boombox has arguably more character in the way it looks, and it also sounds like it looks, which is okay at best. So the history starts as whenever I come across a speaker in working condition, I usually keep it because uh, I think I can put it in a future arcade build. Uh, but that collection got a little bit out of hand, which is what you're looking at here. Although these speakers have a different impedance, um, this is what they all are at face value, and this incredibly cheap amplifier that I also kind of stumbled across requires four to eight ohms impedance. Uh, we have to figure out a way to get this to work together. So that's our plan is to arrange these speakers in a complicated way of series and parallel. So the equivalent resistance matches the amps equivalent or acceptable impedance output. So here's the, how that's done. And the parallel and series equations looks like this. 
So on top of all this, we have to drive this setup in mono since we only have one channel of speakers that we can work with. So most amps will not let you drive the powered output channels tied together, and that's one of these examples. So we'll drive this in mono, but we can mix the preamp left and right channels together using an adapter I made, which also comes in handy. So this is a ground loop isolator, which we also need as our fast and cheap method of power handling has a little bit of feedback noise without this. So we have, we have to isolate the audio from the rest of the ground connection that power goes to. Uh, so speaking of power, let's tackle that. I want this portable. So the best power source available to me are cordless drill batteries and power tool batteries. So we need to build an adapter to clip onto those batteries. Thankfully, someone has already done that legwork on Thingiverse, and that's this part right here. I printed this clip out of PLA. To interface with the battery terminals, I used some metal shears to cut some 2 millimeter thick aluminum, and I made these tabs which are just epoxying in a place. If you have a different battery, like for my case, I have Ryobi batteries at home, I actually catted up this Ryobi adapter and just used some clips from an old charger to easily latch on to Ryobi batteries. Both these batteries are 18 volts nominal, so their charge ranges from 20 volts to 16 volts from a fresh charge to a depleted charge. We need to step this voltage down from 20 volts to 12 volts for the amp and 5 volts for the Bluetooth receiver. So the fast and cheap methods gets us these eBay step-down converters, which have screw terminals to wire to. Here's an overview of that power situation with a diagram of how everything connects. Then I add a power switch just to make things convenient to turn on and off. And this unit's basically done. So how does it sound? Surprisingly, it's okay. It really needs the ground loop isolator because this power, power distribution is a little bit sloppy and there's a bad hum noise without it. Because of this weird speaker collection, we really need some equalizer controls, and fortunately this amp has built-in bass and treble controls because bass capabilities of these speakers, it just kind of drowns out the treble, but it still looks like an absolute unit. So hopefully this inspires you to build something similar. You could definitely use like RC battery packs. They're remarkably similar to drill battery packs, but it's what I have, so that's why I chose it. Um, it's just a little bit easier to buy a drill and charger to use on projects in the future and then get double duty from the batteries with things that you actually make. So Ryobi and Bosch, please send me free stuff. And everybody, thanks for watching.